This is the brand new AC200L by Blue Eddy. It was released roughly 30 days ago, but over the last couple of weeks, I wanted to really thoroughly test this before sharing any type of review on it. And in this video, I'm gonna share what I like and dislike about the AC200L by Blue Eddy. And I performed so many cool, interesting tests with this, and I'm excited to share it with you. Hopefully you stick around and check them all out because there's a couple in here that I think you're gonna to wanna to see. I haven't seen anyone else do them, and I try to put out the best possible review video that I can, so I'm not wasting in your time let's get started and this is everything you're going to receive in the box obviously you're going to get the unit itself a user manual this nice little blue eddy bag to pack all your cords in and a blue eddy strap and we'll talk about the actual cables that you receive first we have the extension cable then your a pv cable that connects to your extension cable so you can connect into the side of the unit and then we have the car adapter, the cigarette lighter. This will connect into your extension cable that connects into the unit. And this is the AC cable that you will plug into the wall to charge the unit. They go as far as adding in the ground screw as well if you need to ground this unit to something. Now let's grab the dimensions real quick. 14 and a half by 16 and three quarters by 11. And then we'll get the actual weight. 61.8 pounds. Now let's take a little bit of a closer look at the DC outputs. This one here is pretty standard on all power stations. It's the 12 volt, 10 amp outlet, but this one here is unique. This is a 48 volt, eight amp, and they have developed this and they're developing a box that's not currently available, but it's gonna become available sometime probably in 2024. It is called a DC 40 that will step this down from 48 volts back down to 12 volts so you could power more appliances using this output versus this output. The USB out ports, we have two USB-C 100 watt ports. However, if you're using both of these at the same time, then you're only gonna receive 150 watts between the both of them. If you're using one at a time, then you'll have 100 watts out of that one and 100 watts out of that one. The USB-C A is five volts, three amps, and it doesn't matter if you're using both of them at the same time or not, you're gonna receive that uh, five volts, three amps. For the AC outlets, we have four 120, 20 amp plugs. And over here, we have a 120 volt, 30 amp plug. It might not seem like much, but I love that each one of these have covers on them. That's an added feature that you don't see on all power stations. And from the input side, we have covers on each one of those as well. The DC input, the AC input, and the battery expansion port. We have a circuit protector and a ground lug. Now let's talk about the push buttons. And this is probably one of the most robust power buttons that I've seen on any power station that I've tested. And for the DC, USB, and the AC buttons, these are not your press and hold. These are just basically press and go. And let's do some quick housekeeping. This is a 2400 watt pure sine wave inverter with a capacity on the batteries at 2,048 watt hours. I will be testing out the capacity and if that inverter can hold at 2,400 watts continuously and if the BMS will actually protect the unit when I overload it. I also want to hook this up to more than 1,200 watts when I test the solar input because I do have a 2,400 watt mobile solar array that I've built and I need to test and see what would happen if we put more than 1200 watts into uh, the power station. I did reach out to Blue Eddy. They advised that it could cause damage to the system and they wouldn't uh, advise that I do that. But there are protections in place and I do need to test those. So I'll probably be doing around 1600 watts to see what would happen. And hopefully it doesn't destroy the unit, but I'm definitely gonna be doing that a little later. And when I'm performing my solar input test, I will not exceed the 145 volts or the 15 amps. And those numbers are gonna dictate how many panels I can hook up. I do not wanna go over the 145 volts or the max amps because I know from experience that if you go over the volts that you can burn up electrical equipment pretty quickly. I do wanna mention that Blue Eddy has developed an app so you can manage this power station and other products that they offer all from one app. And you can actually log in with multiple devices at the same time, say to manage this uh, AC200L from anywhere in the world through their Wi-Fi or locally with the Bluetooth. And I gotta admit that I use the app way more than I thought I would because during testing, I was just going to test the unit, use the app to show you guys what was inside of it, but I found myself referring to that app 
a lot, especially during the capacity test where those took a lot of time. I can see where someone would use the app way more than the actual on screen, especially if they had this stored in an RV like under the bottom because you get connected to it and you can control the entire unit from the app. And if you guys want to see more on that, maybe in a later video, leave me a comment in the description below and I'll go over that. But throughout this video, I'll refer to the app and show you some things inside of it and hopefully you find that helpful. So let's grab this bad boy, take it over to my compressor and see what happens. This test is set up for failure because I have never tested a power station that can run this air compressor, period. So this is expected to fail because this power station is definitely not rated for this air compressor. But let's do the pass through. Then we need to turn on the AC outlet and then turn on the air compressor. Now, I just need to unplug power station. I do see a red alarm going off in a corner and hopefully I didn't burn it up. I went real quick. Let's just see if we can turn it off and then turn it back on and see if that goes away. All right, so that did reset that and I didn't burn up the unit. So it does have a good BMS in this. Definitely didn't work. I didn't think it would, but it's good to try those tests out because I know we're pushing upwards of 3000 watts continuously on this air compressor. And now let's have a little bit more fun and see what happens if we try to do this from startup. Hey, it actually turned it over. That's the best that any power station have ever done with this air compressor. So it's actually more impressive on the startup than it was when I uh, pulled it from the wall through the pass through. So I'm impressed. During that test, if we look closely, this surged over 3,500 watts and the BMS did exactly what it was supposed to to protect the power station. I'm gonna go ahead and continue the theme of overloading. In my next test, I'm gonna do a continuous discharge, but I'm gonna go over the 2400 watts to see what would happen if it's protected. And then we'll come back and we'll do a continuous discharge of right at 2400 watts to see if this will actually continue to operate for X amount of time at 2400 watts. For the continuous discharge, I'm gonna be using two of these heat guns. I'll be able to easily overload the BMS with these two. I should be able to get up to around 32 or 3300 watts and we have our overload signal on here all we need to do is reset and that performed very well because the way that this inverter is set up it's capable of handling more than 2400 watts so once you go from 2500 to 3000 watts you can do that for two minutes you can go from 3000 watts to 3600 watts that's going to happen for five seconds anything over 3,600 watts is gonna happen for a half a second, and it has the capability of actually going up to a surge of 7,200 watts. So the further you go up that chain, the faster that that shutdown happens. And the BMS is protecting everything that it's supposed to. Now, we need to know if the continuous discharge can hold up to 2,400 watts. We don't want this unit to shut off in this test. Up to this point, that's what I've been looking for. Make sure that it's shut off because it's going over what it's capable of doing. Protect itself. Now, it's capable of 2,400 watts. Let's see if it can do it. And this is about as close as I'm gonna get to 2,400 because it's bouncing around and sometimes it goes over it and I don't want it to go over it at all. So right now, I think I've got it set to my best possible setting to get it close to 2,400. Let's see how long it can go. Not only is this performing at 2400 watts continuously like it's supposed to, I just did a thermal scan on it and it's running as cool as a cucumber. That concludes a very successful continuous discharge test. Now I gotta get this charged up and do a capacity test. You can charge the AC200L in three different charging modes. That is the standard mode, the turbo mode, and the silent mode. And I've tested those sound levels on each one of the charging modes. And I'm gonna tell you, you don't have to go down to the silent mode for this thing to be extremely quiet. Even on the turbo mode, I was bringing in 1200 watts of solar power and 1200 watts of AC power. And this thing was extremely quiet. And I've ran my cables in from outside and I wanna make sure to test the voltage, 141.2. And that's almost perfect of going up to the 145. 
I don't want to go over that. So this puts me right at 1600 watts with those four 400 watt Aptos solar panels that are outside. They are bifacial panels, so they could get a little boost, but we're not over the 145 volts and we're not over the 15 amps because those run at 12.99 amps and I have them connected in series so the amps are not affected, only the voltage. When charging on silent mode, no matter whether you got it hooked to solar or if you're doing it from the AC outlet, it will never go over 800 watts between the two. And the same goes for standard mode, it just goes up to 1200 watts. Once we turn on turbo mode, we can get a maximum of 1200 watts out of the uh, solar array and 1200 watts out of the AC input. However, once this drops below 1200, it'll make up the difference over here on AC input up to 1400 watts. So right now we're at 1046 and 1357, giving us right at that 2400 watts of charging power. If this happens to go up to 1200 watts on the solar array, if the sun pops up real strong, then this will go down to 1200 watts. But let's say if we disconnected the solar altogether, the maximum that this can charge at is 1400 watts. If we disconnected the AC altogether, the maximum that the solar can charge at is 1200 watts. And during my test on turbocharge, I noticed that this stopped charging at the 2400 watts right around 80%. I'm not sure the exact percentage, but I noticed it right around there. And now that we've reached 98%, the charge has even come down further to slow basically your silent mode to around that 800 watts. So as it charges, your state of charge gets up to the 80%. I think even if you're on turbo charge and I'm still on turbo mode in the app, it reduces it down to 1400 watts into standard mode charge. And then now that I've reached 98%, it's reduced me down to the 800 watts, which is the silent mode because we're getting closer to being that 100% charge. Most people purchase these units because of two numbers, the output, which this is 2400 watts and the capacity. And this is 2048 watt hours. And I'm gonna test what the capacity is on the AC side and the DC side. And to provide you with the industry averages, we should receive somewhere around 85 to 90% efficiency out of the AC side and 80 to 85% efficiency on the DC side. The capacity comes in at 1901 watt hours, which is absolutely insane. That surprised me huge because I've never tested a power station that come in over 92%. This is 92.8%, nearly 93% efficient at the AC outlet. Now that I got it charged back up to 100%, I'm gonna do the DC capacity test. I'm gonna use this DC load tester that's got a screen down here that tells us everything that we need to know. This test is gonna take nearly 16 hours to complete. The DC capacity came in at 1,744 watt hours, which is 85.15%, which is right at the top range of the industry standard. So hats off to Blue Eddy once again. Now let's talk about the four different UPS modes. And the AC200L comes with four different UPS modes, the standard UPS, the priority UPS, the time of use UPS, and the customizable UPS. And the standard UPS is the one that most of us are familiar with. That's the one where you got it plugged into an AC source, the power goes out, it automatically switches and starts using the power from the battery. If you have the unit set to PV priority UPS, then it's gonna take priority from the solar array that you have connected first. So if the power goes out, it's gonna use the power that's being generated by the solar panels, and then it's gonna use the power from the battery. And the time of use UPS or the time controlled UPS is quite possibly the coolest future about this power station. And the reason that future is so cool is because if you're in an area where they charge you peak hours and off peak hour rates for your energy consumption, then this could act as a storage unit and you would charge it during off peak hours and you would use it during peak hours. So you would be able to save that difference of whatever that is from your normal rate to your peak hour rate and hypothetically be able to use this unit to pay for itself. And the last one is the customized UPS. That's basically a blend of the PV priority and the time of use. You're able to customize this to your needs. It's time to test out that UPS function. I have this set on standard UPS and I've tested out all four of the different modes that you can set this in. And this, 
uh, acts exactly the same no matter what mode you have it on for the transfer. We're trying to see if we can get a flicker in that light when we disconnect or the power disconnects from the source and it switches over to battery. So we have it plugged in, it's charging at 1200 watts and now we're just gonna unplug it. We didn't get any flicker. Usually that's where people's tests end that I've seen. I have not seen anybody do this. Now let's plug it back in. We didn't get any flicker. So it did its transfer on that side. No flicker going back into that as well. Now, here's the interesting part. If we plug in a larger load, like this space heater, and let me just point out, I absolutely love this unit. It's the best unit I have ever tested. But when I find things like this, I like to share it with you. Under a large load, if we disconnect, we get a millisecond, I mean, it's extremely fast blink. And you've probably seen it there. If we plug it back in, we don't have any flicker. So the flicker is there. There is one when we're pulling a large load. So let's see exactly what that load is. Right now we're going at 800 watts. So I have the heater turned on a lower setting. Um, let's turn it on high and see if we can even get a, a longer flicker. Now this is something that I'm doing on the fly. So let's plug that in. All right, it's switched over. Yeah, so the larger the load, the longer the flicker. So that's just important that I point that out. I try to find everything that I love about this unit and things I think need improvement. Although this is probably the best I've seen that I have ever tested, there's still room for improvement when it's under a large load when we do the transfer. And it's really cool to have a power station of this size. This is not a really big power station. And to have the expandability on something like this is really awesome. And you can actually use three different Blue Eddy batteries that are compatible with this. The B230, the B300, and the soon to be B210. It's compatible with one B230 that would expand it by 2048 watt hours or two B300s that can expand it about 6,144 watt hours. And when the new B210 models come out, you can expand this with two of those up to 4,300 watt hours. My final thoughts on this Blue Eddy AC200L is that it's the best power station that I've ever tested, almost in every category that I tested. It performs just like it says it's going to, it's new, it has all the best technologies that it's available on the market on these power stations. And Blue Eddy offers you a five-year warranty and it performs better than any other power station. So for me, it's a hands down winner. Right now, Blue Eddy has got the best 2,400 watt power station on the market. Appreciate you hanging out with me to the end of the video. And because you've done that, I would like to ask you one little small favor. Maybe you've learned something today or I'm able to at least keep you entertained up to this point. And if I did, please smash the thumbs up button. Really does help me out a lot. I appreciate it. Hope to catch you in my next video.